Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Michael and today we are making something completely impractical for the world we live in right now, a duffel bag. This is my favorite duffel bag. It's a Supreme bag that I got in Thailand. And this is another duffel bag that's just absolutely too big for anyone to handle. While I like the simplicity of the big bag, I really enjoy the size of the Supreme bag. So I feel like I have the skills where I could bring those two together and create a bag that is both simple yet practical when travel is permitted again. Let's do it. As with every sewing project, we are starting with a pattern. This is a very geometric design. It's two circles and a rectangle. So the pattern is not very intricate, but I did struggle a little bit trying to make a very perfect circle, which I uh, kind of used dental floss and a pen and a pin to make a makeshift compass. And I got my circle and then now I'm just tracing it twice onto my orange denim fabric, which I'm just so excited that I'm actually getting my money's worth. For this project, I actually challenged myself to do two new things. One is working with piping, the other is zippers, but we'll get there. With the piping, right now I'm just measuring to make sure I actually bought enough and that my calculations were right. Uh, working with circles is interesting because you have 2 pi r, which I'm sure you remember from geometry, and that's how you get the circumference. And the circumference is always so much more than you think it's going to be. I was actually really fortunate that my denim had a long enough length that could accommodate the circle I was working with. Now is where my order of operations starts to get a little bit weird. Uh, I'm, I'm not really basing this on anything except the two duffels you saw in the intro. So I was just kind of trying to figure out how I was going to plan the zipper, how I was going to plan the piping and the straps and everything. And my first thought was, ooh, I could sew this nice little straight line that's going to be part of the zipper cover. And this is probably the cleanest stitch in the whole, the whole project. After this, it was all downhill. Right here, as you can see, I'm using the other bag as a reference to just get a general idea of how long the handle needs to be. I bought some like webbing, uh, strapping, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's like black. It's about, I think two inches thick or an inch and a half thick. And it seemed heavy duty enough to be a bag strap. Right now, making the handles, I just kind of folded it over, sewed it. This is probably 10 inches wide for the handle portion. And I did that for both sides. And for neatness sake, I sewed the edge of the webbing over on itself, probably about, I don't know, a quarter inch, half an inch. It wasn't much. It was just to kind of clean it up so it doesn't fray because those edges are going to be the bottom of the bag. They're actually going to touch uh, the left side of the bag and the right side of the bag underneath. And I just want it to be as clean of a seam as possible because once it starts fraying, that's going to be the weak spot where the bag ultimately fails. And then it was just a matter of sewing it all together onto the bag. And this is where the bag actually really started to look kind of like a bag. Even though it was a lot of straight stitches, there was a lot of headache that just went into this because of how long each strap was and how long each of those stitches was. I'm pretty sure I ran out of not just the bobbin, but also the thread on top. It was an amazing amount of thread that I used in this project. I don't think I've used this much in any of my projects yet. At the top of the bag where the strap turns into the handle, that's the point that gets the most stress. So to strengthen it, I sewed a box and I put an X in it, very similar to what I did on the apron, except this is far more important that it needs to be actually strong or the bag will ultimately fail. That being said, I do think I did a much cleaner job with these than I did on the apron project.
I'm not actually sure why I did this zipper step here because I still have more strapping to work on, but I bought a separating zipper and I needed it to not be a separating zipper. So I had to sew the bottom and I basically did, oh, what do they call it? Like a wrap stitch or it's something like that. You just take your, your needle and thread and go around it like 20 times. And that's supposed to hold the zipper from separating completely. I don't know, but it seemed to work well enough. I'm just gonna hope that it holds. For this bag, I wanted to do like a bonus strap and I did not trust my zipper enough. So I wanted to have buckles. So I could not only have a zipper to hold the bag together, but also a couple parachute buckles to hold the bag together. I, I'm just repeating myself at this point. Essentially, it was just kind of sewing it and then sewing it to the bag. It's pretty self-explanatory just from seeing what I'm doing on screen. I should say that after I finished this whole project, I went back and I sewed a little bit more. I sewed the handle straps over top the parachute buckle straps just a little bit because in some of these scenes, you can see that there's just a sliver of orange that exists between the two strapping. And I thought that was going to be a really weak point and I wanted to give it the strength. So I busted out the sewing machine, sewed it up a little bit, but I did not film it. Now is the part that everyone has been waiting for. How will Michael fare with the zipper? Well, Anakin Skywalker said it best, and I'm just going to leave it to him to, to let you guys know what's about to happen. This is where the fun begins. When I started this project, I looked for a zipper foot. I could not find a zipper foot, so I decided to use the regular kind of all-purpose general foot that I had on the sewing machine, and that was a mistake. I could not get a straight line out of this thing for my life. The way that the zipper was kicking it off, and it was just, it is absolutely terrible. It's horrendous how bad this seam is. Even when I was a quarter inch coming back the other way on the zipper, it was just, it, it's, it's shameful how poorly this zipper went. It's unreal. And that was just the first one. I had two zippers to sew on there. You have one side and then you obviously need to sew the other side so that it has something to zip. But it was just the biggest headache. I forget what time at night this was. I was just tired and exhausted and frustrated and just everything about this whole experience was terrible. I was just, yeah, you'll, you'll see. Oh my god. It's the bobbin again. I just filled it up. Voice over Michael popping back in just real quick. Just look how beautiful those X's are. And the, the stitch work is just beautiful. Okay, back to complaining. Cool, 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 cool. I'm done for the night. I am. Oh. I don't have words for this. Would you look at that? In my frustration last night, I was like just digging through uh, this little box here and I thought I, I looked before and I didn't, I just didn't know what a zipper foot looked like. I found a zipper foot. So we are back in business for at least one of the zippers will be on properly. So I guess the bobbin and the thread both running out was kind of a, a godsend. So I'm just gonna jump right back in and we're gonna finish this thing off. Finding that zipper foot was a game changer. It was the one thing that saved this project and gave me the motivation to keep pushing through 
because unbeknownst to me at the time, you also need a zipper foot when you work with piping. I'm not sure what I would have done had I struggled through the zipper portion of this project and then got to the piping and realized I just could not advance and move on. All of the blogs online said that the best way to apply piping was to, ultimately it's going to be sandwiched between two pieces of fabric. You want to sew it to one side first, make sure that it's held on properly, and then you just pretend that it's not even there and you sew your two fabrics together and then presto changeo, you have piping. It's amazing. I was gonna do this off camera, but I wanted to show you how I got the piping to be kind of a seamless circle because you can't just kind of butt up the two ends and hope that it, it looks good. You need to do a little bit of trickery to, to get it to be kind of like this. I hope this is in focus. It's super hard to focus on the black, but basically I have a strand I've gone all the way around and then I've overlapped it probably two to three inches here. And then I've popped the seams. So I have access to the, the cording inside. And then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this white rope here where it lines up with the start of the last one. And if I actually cut it, that would help. Then basically you're going to tuck this inside of this and then you're going to sew it <clears throat> you're going to sew it as one continuous seam all the way around and then no one's going to be the wiser the hero of this project the mvp the main just uh the the most amazing like every award should be awarded to the zipper foot for really putting in the work and actually getting me across the finish line with this project now comes the tricky part. This is like a geometric puzzle. I'm trying to sew a circle to a rectangle perpendicularly, but have them meet up just right. And it, like there's piping in there. So as you can see, I used a zillion magic clips and I'm just trying to sew it the best that I can. And I think I nailed it. It's just, I don't want to toot my own horn but I absolutely destroyed this project. I was absolutely sweating bullets at this point in the project because this was the last main seam I had to do and it was the last, just everything was like relying on this final seam, working out and being right and not accidentally sewing over the piping. And like I said, I, I destroyed it, I nailed it. I don't like tooting my own horn, but I cannot be humble about this. This project turned out so much better than I could have ever imagined in my head. And I really kind of think that accidentally getting these seams right was kind of the cherry on top. Oh, I wasn't done. Um, yeah, I totally forgot about this part. So I did a zigzag stitch all the way around it again to basically surge off the ends because I don't need the bag fraying within when I have clothes and whatnot in there kind of rubbing up against it. This is just a little bit more security to make sure that the fabric stays as one whole piece and doesn't disintegrate on me. And there we have it, the bag. And you can't see me, so I'm just gonna sit down like normal. This is the final bag. I am honestly just super excited at how well it turned out. I had no experience with piping or zippers. The zippers, as you saw, obviously gave me a little bit of trouble, but like the piping came out fantastically. I think it gives it just enough flair to set it apart from the just a basic duffel bag. like. This is like, oh, time and effort and like 
it, it was just there was a little bit more heart put into it. There are a few issues, if you want to call them issues, mostly revolving around the zipper. Most of it is just cosmetic aesthetic issues, not choosing the right color thread for the zipper itself. Had I known that it would have come out this way, I may have chosen uh, a more matchy-matchy color, but it doesn't bother me. It's just something to consider for next time, if there is a next time. Also, something that was an added surprise, I put on the parachute buckles because I just wanted them uh, as kind of extra support in case the zipper ever came undone, or if the zipper broke, these would be able to kind of at least get me to my destination without having to worry about the contents spilling out. I just found out that if I pull this one, I can actually cinch them down the way they're designed to. So that's an accidental win. This also has so much capacity, it's unreal. But I'm not gonna get to use it until I get the vaccine, so then I can travel and put this thing to use. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Take care, goodbye.